Hi, I'm Calvin Clark of Clark's Corvair Parts. It's January 2013, the start of our 40th year. You're looking at our five-year-old catalog, 2007 to 2012, and in a couple months we'll be releasing our next new catalog, the 2013 to 2018. We thought you might like to see how we go about creating this 650-page catalog. It takes us about six to seven months to create a new catalog, and to do this we need to be completely organized and in a controlled environment. This is where I work. This is the office where I put everything together from the last five years. During the five years, people make notes in their main catalog of any corrections or things that they think need to be improved. We also publish each year a supplement and the supplement has any new parts that we may have added. So my job is to take large copies of each page of the 650 plus page catalog, make the changes, make sure that everything gets organized, doesn't get left out of the new catalog. This is an 11 by 17 copy of a catalog page and I'll make red notes on it, I'll add parts to it, and then I pass it on to Barb and it's her job to try to integrate everything into the page or decide whether or not we need to add additional pages to the catalog. We printed our first catalog 40 years ago and at that time the only thing available to us was a typewriter and a Mimeo machine. Even by 1984-85 an office editing system might cost anywhere from twenty to thirty thousand dollars unlike today when you can get a desktop publishing system pretty much free when you buy a computer. So when we started out, all we could do was type on an 8.5 by 11 page and use that in our catalog. We quickly ran out of space and learned the trick that if we typed our catalog on a page that was 11 by 16 and then reduced it 34%, we could go from a large page where we could put a lot of information on over to the final normal size page for the catalog. My wife Joan did the, all the catalogs and supplements for 34 years and then started training Barb. So let's check with Barb and we'll see how she takes this giant old paste up and you can see it's actually stuck together and currently produces our catalog pages. These are some of the tables that she uses for laying out the catalog as she's working on the various pages. So Barb has the dubious task of putting all this mess together. So this is what I get for a worksheet from Cal. There's usually pieces taped to it, there's pictures taped to it of stuff we want to add, stuff we want to take out. So I work from this to create a finished page and then I also need to keep track of, again, the items that are coming in and the items that are leaving that page so that we can keep an accurate list for index and a list for our system in-house so that all of our order takers know what page items are on, as well as updating the internet. As Barb finishes each page, she makes a copy of it, and the copy comes to Linda. And I check each part number against the computer, make sure it's all correct, and I look for spelling errors, and just make sure things are easily understood. Thanks to Barb, we're back to visit Linda again. As Barb's doing the catalog pages, she does 3 by 5s for every part number that's being added to a page, deleted from a page, or moved to another page. And what type of uh, joyous job does that give you, Linda? Well, I actually enjoy Index, and I take each of her cards and just make sure that there's a listing in our Index for each of the parts so that our customers can easily find each part by description various ways and this is probably I'm guessing about at least a three to four week job to do. Okay thank you Linda. It's taken a long time but we're finally ready to do the negatives. They'll be done on this 35 year old camera that we use just for negatives. I can set the reduction as needed to bring these down to the eight and a half by eleven page size then the exposure light goes on for about six to eight seconds and then about three minutes later we get a negative. 
I couldn't show you the exposure because the light is so bright, but once it's exposed, the film travels along here, down into the developer, up out of the developer, into the fixer, and then through two water baths. This is all done automatically. I've just got the cover off so you can see how it works. This is the final negative. It comes out about 9 inches wide and 12 inches tall. If everything's going well, I end up with a whole line of negatives. But wait, there's more. Normally Kelly has to work in semi-darkness. Kelly, what are you doing? I am aligning the negatives on the back side of the max masking sheet exactly. I then cut away the masking sheet so I can see the negative. So now you're all done. No, I need to transfer any pictures and I need to opaque out any defects. When she was saying she has to opaque, she takes a special paint, looks at the negative and paints over any little defects. Once the negatives are opaque, we're ready to burn the aluminum printing plate. Kelly is aligning it on the metal plate. This is a special machine that exposes the metal plate. Then it's tipped upside down and exposed to a very bright light. This is the developing fluid. Because the catalog is over 650 pages, we have over 650 negatives, and that means about 325 of these metal plates. On the printing press, which we'll see next, the ink is attracted to the image area, the water to the non-image area, and when everything is in balance, you get a good print job. After weeks of work, we finally have our printing plates, and the printing plates will go on this web press. It takes rolls of paper that are about 40 inch diameter and weigh about 400 pounds. This section of the press is the water fountain. This puts the water onto the printing plate. These are the ink rollers. It takes a lot of ink rollers to mill the ink down to the point that it's fine enough to go onto the printing plate. This is where the ink goes in and gets dispensed. And underneath there are adjustments that John can adjust the amount of ink going on to various sections of the printing plate. This is the plate that we saw Kelly making. And here's the rubber blanket. The ink goes from the metal plate onto the rubber blanket. The paper is coming between the rubber blanket and a steel cylinder and that presses the paper against the image and that's what does the printing. In the middle of the press as it gets running you'll see we have to flip the paper over to go into the second tower. The second tower is identical to the first tower. Then the paper comes out through here. There's a set of knives those will cut the paper to the 17 inch length. John, where did you get your professional training? Uh, right here at Clark's about 20 years ago, Cal. <laughs> okay, as usual, we figure if somebody else can do it, we can figure out how to do it too. And about how many copies an hour does it do? This will do about 18,000 sheets an hour. Okay, let's see her run. You notice the paper goes through many rollers here. This is to help straighten it out so it's perfectly straight when it goes into the printing press.
Once John has printed the pages, we like to let them set overnight for the ink to set up, and then Judy has to take them and cut them on this special cutter. Since we're printing two page, two different pages at a time, she has to stack them up accordingly with the correct page going on the correct pile. We now have all the pages cut. So this level equals 10,000 sheets, 10,000 sheets, and so forth. And there's a total of 32 piles of different pages. Our collator has four towers, each of which can hold eight bins of paper. So there's eight different pages on there, eight different pages there. And Jay's going to show us how he fills the bins. Just slips a stack of paper in there. So the collator is all set to go. Before Jay actually turns the machine on, the collator is bringing all 32 sheets of paper down into here. It jogs them to get them together. We then staple the set so that we don't lose any pages and the finished ones will come out here. Right, first thing we want to do is we turn on the stapler. Then we turn on the machine itself. And to make sure that we're going to have all the pages, first thing we want to do is we cycle each tower. Staple it. If I go through the book, actually make sure that we have every page. And if they're all there, just press go and the machine will print it all out. Once all five sets are done for the specialty catalog, the only way that we've got to put them together is by hand, which is what Judy's doing. The specialty has five different sets to it. The main catalog has seven different sets to it. We do approximately 10,000 catalogs per run. This is a machine that will perfect bind the cover onto the catalog. The finished catalog goes into here. Underneath these plates are a rotary cutting blade that roughens up and evens up the spine of the book. The book then goes across the glue rollers to get glue on it. goes over the cover where it will stop. The cover comes up and gets pressed onto the book. step after we've perfect bound the catalogs is to trim the three sizes. This cutter has a built-in program that will automatically do that. It's only taken us six to eight months and we finally have a finished specialty catalog. A few weeks later we end up with the finished main catalog and are able to start shipping them out to you thanks to your continued support.